partners from three different member states and associated countries. This includes partners coming uh, and, uh, from, and as well as international partners. And obviously one of the consortium partners will be the project coordinator. Beneficiaries, once your proposal has been selected for funding, the partners which make up the consortium are now referred to as beneficiaries. Funding and vendors portal, it is the entry point for participants and experts in funding programs and tenders managed by the European Commission and other EU bodies. You can search and apply for funding for opportunities and calls for proposals. The actual proposal is your written idea and all each 20 project proposals are required to be presented in a specific outline. This is dictated by the Horizon 2020 proposal template. There are different templates for research and innovation actions, innovation actions, CSAs, MSCAs, ERCs, and we will go in a bit of more detail. However, if you really want to know more about the templates, we had a previous webinar and you can follow that on our website. The submission, once you uh, have your proposal you and you uh, respect the deadline, you submit it on the funding and tenders portal. Apart from the templates, everything will be done electronically. The evaluation, so when your proposal is admissible and eligible, the independent experts follow a specific evaluation criteria during the evaluation. Proposals are evaluated and scored against selection and award criteria, which is based on excellence, impact, and quality and efficiency of implementation. Experts can award criterion on a scale from zero to five. And as well as half points are also given. The consortium agreement, the consortium agreement is a private agreement between the beneficiaries to set out the rights and obligation amongst themselves. And this one, it does not involve the European Commission or any agency, this is done internally. The grant agreement, it is the funding agreement concluded between the European Commission or funding agency and the project participants and specifies the rights and obligation of the contracting parties. It contains important provisions for the implementation of the project such as the criteria for the eligibility of costs and provisions for handling intellectual property rights. Last but not least, the partner search. It is the process of finding the ideal partners and forming a consortium with them in order for apply on H2020 goal. One can use several partner search tools, which we will explain during this webinar. So as I said previously, we will guide you from the idea to the consortium, to proposal, submission, grant agreement, and finally, the project. So idea, finding the perfect topic that matches your idea. Once you uh, have uh, this idea, you go onto the funding and tenders portal and you type in your keywords. And uh, I just selected a few here. Um, Horizon 2020 covers a huge range of topics. But for the sake of the example, um, I chose migration, AI, ports, aviation, traffic, and climate. And so once you log into this funding and tender portal, you write your keywords. And here I just chose AI. I selected the closed in order to display the open opportunities. And here we have 75 results. And in fact, let's see the first one. It's on medical technologies, digital tools, and AI analytics to improve surveillance and care at high technology readiness levels. Then you click on it and obviously you, uh, you check out what is the specific challenge, scope and what they expect from you. So once we have that idea and we have uh, checked out the topic, we can actually start to look for our partners and build our consortium. The first thing you need to ask yourself is what are the needed expertise? And uh, as you may know, as I explained before, the general rule is that the European Commission often requires a minimum of three partners per project coming from EU member states or associated countries. And uh, there are these, let's say, four key words that you need to look for into your consortium. That they have complementarity, interdisciplinarity, balance and excellence. What do you mean by complementarity? So each partner should have a unique role and bring in a special required expertise or technology. 
make sure you have a clear idea of what kind of roles and expertise you need to deliver the work and therefore avoid redundancy. Interdisciplinarity, you have to tackle outstanding challenges. You need a collaboration that brings together diverse viewpoints and knowledge. To do so, you need to go beyond a single discipline. Setting up a consortium that combines partners from various disciplines is thus essential. Balance, think about aspects like the geographical spread of the partners and balance between profit and non-profit partners. Also, pay attention to the gender balance of the key investigators involved. And last but not least, excellence. A strong consortium brings together the brightest minds in the various key disciplines. Therefore, identify the two key opinion leaders within your field or topic. How to find partners? So um, we do advise you that you get out there and uh, you attend these events, which um, are related to Horizon 2020. The networks provide, and we will discuss more on the network, but they provide a variety of events, such as um, the ICT Proposers Day, um, the European Research and Innovation Days, which this time around will be held online, so therefore it will allow um, a higher participation number, um, uh, further information days and brokerage events, for example, um, the bottom one, which is from April 21st to 24th, 2021, it was supposed to happen this year, but Due to the pandemic, it has been postponed, and it is a very um, it's the leading show for general aviation. So I would suggest that if you're interested in that, you go and check it out and uh, actually meet these partners there and then. Going on to the NCP networks, so we as NCPs, we're part of networks, and we're really close to them, and uh, everyone covers different areas. So, for example, the idealist, it's focused on ICT. The nuclear 2020, it's focused on your atom. The net for society, so it covers societal challenge six. And uh, so it covers Europe in a changing world and uh, many different areas on governance, migration, etc. We have uh, the rich, which is for research infrastructures. The seven four, for security topics. ETNA 2020 for smart, green, and integrated transport. And uh, just a side note on this one, they have a very good toolbox on their website. And uh, on this toolbox, you can also actually search, for, have partner search a facility there. And most of them, they do allow that, these networks. DHN, DHN and point of your health. The NMP team is for nanotechnologies, advanced materials, and advanced texturing processing. And as well, the NCP scare it's for societal challenge five, which is the climate action and the environment one. And uh, apart from our networks, we also have other initiatives. So the International Forum to Advanced First Responder Innovation, it focuses on technology needed to help first responders conduct their missions safely. Therefore, it provides a platform for international collaboration on innovative research. The ECS, it's on cybersecurity as well, it's another organization. Photonics 21, it unites the photonics industries and stakeholders. CESAR, which works on new research and innovation with regards to air traffic management, and it also pulls around 3,000 experts. The BDV, which is focused on big data, and they organize networking and information days as well. So we would highly suggest that you check out these initiatives and see what events and other um, maybe online events as well now that they open. Further other initiatives. So um, uh, we have the CORDIS, the Project Repository Journal, and the Dashboard. So from these uh, initiatives, let's say you can First, log into them. I provided the link here, and the slide will be shared afterwards. But in a nutshell, um, you can search for uh, previous funded projects. You can know from here, you can learn what the commission is looking for. And apart from that, you can actually learn who, uh, the, who the consortium is made up of. And uh, from there on, you can actually contact these organizations and uh, Maybe they could, uh, you could collaborate with them as well, since you know that now they have the expertise there. Plum tree. 
So Plumtree, um, uh, it's, uh, it's provided, so in 2015, it was launched and, and it's the platform for Mediterranean research and innovation. And it serves as a tool for research and innovation stakeholders in the Mediterranean region. And the main aim of Plumtree is to facilitate networking and knowledge sharing, and also to serve as a one-stop shop for information on the latest news, events and funding opportunities in the spheres of R&D. By registering on Plumtree, you will gain access to all of its useful features, including the possibility of finding partners for collaborative research. Engaging with other members is also um, um, promoted on this platform, and it is also managed by the Mota Council for Science and Technology. Up next is Jurexis, another platform. It's a unique pan-European initiative delivering information and support services to professional researchers. It supports researcher mobility and career development, while enhancing scientific collaboration between Europe and the world. From here, you can find research organizations, universities, and businesses, researchers, and entrepreneurs as well. Finally, the partner search. So how to write the best partner search? Basically, a partner search is a one-page proposal description of what you offer, one page or two pages. You try to keep it brief, but at the same time, you include the important details, such as the organization profile, contact details, past experience and expertise, the list of topics which you are searching and you want to partner on, your role in the project, and why you should be chosen to be part of the consortium. In order to write the best partner search, you have to ensure that it is tailored to the topic of interest. And not a generic, we are excellent brochure. Um, state exactly what part of the topic scope you want to address and explain how you would do that. Also, include your track record in this data, in this area. And if you've done previous 2020 projects, um, kindly mention them. Also, if you have any relevant links and big names um, that you can bring uh, on the table, mention them as well. And demonstrate that uh, the proposal will not succeed if you are not part of the team and make sure that you are essential for this process. Um, as I mentioned previously, um, don't shy away even if it's your first time. The commission always looks for a balance between the consortium and uh, do not be afraid to uh, reach out to the more experienced partners. So from this public partner search is where our roles as NCPs really um, comes in. As, uh, as we saw in the previous slides, there are a number of networks. And once we receive your one page, two page proposal description, we will forward it to these networks. And these networks will then disseminate it to their local national stakeholders. There are some exceptions as well where you can be a mono beneficiary. And uh, these exceptions are the MSCA, EIC, ERC, and CSA. So for the MSCA, um, just a short description on it, it provides grants for all stages of research careers, be they doctoral candidates or highly experienced researchers, and encourage transnational, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary mobility. The EIC, it's the Enhanced European Innovation Council, pilot aims to support top class innovators, startups, small companies, and researchers with bright ideas that are radically different from existing products, services, or business models, which are highly risky and they have the potential to scale up internationally. The ERC grants, they are awarded through open competition to projects headed by starting and established researchers, irrespective of their origins who are working or moving to work in Europe. The CSAs, they are the coordination and support actions, and they are part of the three main type of actions found in Horizon 2020. It offers 100% funding rate, and one can participate as a mono beneficiary. We have mentioned several partner search tools, um, and here is another list where uh, you can actually uh, import put your, your partner search, that's one page to page description of your entity and what you offer. Um, uh, you can also upload that on the participant portal 
Um, and there are also LinkedIn H2020 groups, which you can, I'm sure that most of you have a LinkedIn account and you can easily search for, um, let's say, uh, ICT, ICT network, for example. There are a number of groups dedicated to each societal challenge, let's say that, and you can access them there. Consortium and the proposal. So um, ask yourself these questions. How does the consortium as a whole reach the objectives? The complementarity is very important. And if you are covering all objectives and impact of the topic, what does every single partner contribute to this? Does everyone have an appropriate and relevant role in the consortium? As well, mention if you have partners from third countries, um, sometimes in a call topic, they specifically ask you that they want collaboration with third countries, so you have to really pay attention to that. And in general, the coordinator has the main responsibility for the proposal making process. However, the consortium partners need to provide their input. Um, uh, everyone has a different role in the consortium, and uh, the input as a partner, at least um, uh, in the template, there's a dedicated section for consortium details. And there is where your role has to come in as a partner. And um, we will discuss this further um, by my colleague Mark as well. But it is very important to provide your input as well, even if you are not a coordinator. So, as general responsibilities, the coordinator is is the single point of contact between the participants and the for the proposal. And the partner it's, is invited by the coordinator to fill in the administrative forms. And uh, here is a table which basically more or less covers what are the responsibilities held by um, the different partners in a consortium. The coordinator has the main work. He selects the call, add invite participants, submit the proposal, read the complete proposal, define the budget table, and create contacts for a partner. As a partner, you have to read the complete proposal and as well provide other further inputs which the coordinator asks you for. We will now move on to the proposal. I invite my colleague Mark to take the floor now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so, hi, my name is Mark Melak, and I'm the National Contact Point for ICT Nanotechnology and Secure Society. So, from now on, I will be explaining a little bit the remnant parts and remnant steps of the whole process. So, we move into the proposal stage. So, the first thing that um, happens when a consortium is taking shape or it's actually formulating forming and the first thing that is usually done is the kickoff meeting. In the kickoff meeting, um, the coordinator first of all explains the idea, obviously explains in more detail the topic that he has selected, and obviously he tries to map his idea with the expected impact. Obviously, uh, one thing that needs to be done here is the grouping and also the selection of the partners. So the, the, at this stage, the partners have been selected, and usually the list is very extensive at first because um, things might change. For example, partners may uh, forfeit or they will not consider anymore. But at this stage, um, the kickoff meeting is a very important um, step in the process because everyone is providing his input, especially when, for example, considering even budgets. So things are a bit fluid at this stage, but um, it doesn't mean that um, and things are not taking place, but at least there is an, like an incubation of the idea of a consortium which is formed. So if you are a coordinator, obviously you are taking care of the organization of these meetings, but apart from that, everyone is contributing to his part. So if you are a partner, you still need to understand what the call is about. The topic text needs to be read more than once, and obviously when you are going to input any information to the coordinator, make sure that you are reflecting the expected input. Then after that, um, the consortium uh, the, the, the kickoff meeting is also helping you in understanding, for example, the difference 
in cultures. For example, obviously in a consortium, there are different entities which are coming from different member states. So obviously um, it is better to set a common language when it comes even um, communication and also how to do things. Obviously at this stage it's very important to make sure that everyone is committed to proceed with this proposal because yet again things may change and circumstances and maybe confirmation from entities would not maybe be respected as well so the takeaway from this slide is actually to avoid initial um, misunderstandings make sure that you are also aware that in the consortium we have different parties which have different interests for example let's say you have the research infrastructures or or for universities which their interest would be the scientific excellence and making for example more and more publications but then you have also another part which is the industry maybe the industry is more focused in creating technology that would render some form of turnover so obviously the best thing to do here is that the coordinator sets the plane in a sense that everyone uh, although might not be adhering to the um, request which is in the call text at least everyone has one commitment to move um, in the forward direction um, it could be also the case that um, there are multiple end users on the, in the same consortium so obviously it could be a situation where if you are an end user you need to also compete with other end users so that the technology that will be developed in the project it will be transferred to your entity so that it could be tested on site in this case obviously if you are testing the technology that has been developed you can also ask for more budget but obviously this is something that goes case by case and um, i have put also this um, and slide here because then um, last time we had also a very good webinar on, on templates. I'm not going into detail, but I would like to point out that templates are very important um, at every stage of the proposal. Obviously, this, uh, when it comes to filling up these templates, it is always the responsibility of the coordinator, but the input of every partner is very essential. Apart from that, in the templates, they, they are filled with um, very relevant information on what um, segments you need to provide so the template in itself is a very guiding tool on how to complete and fulfill a good proposal here we have a very simplistic um, schematic on how um, a proposal takes shape and take shape so make sure that you know that there are different work packages every work package has a work leader a work package leader and each work package is also reference to different parties so it could be the case that for example partner a is involved in work package one and work package three maybe, maybe partner b is involved only in work package two also the, the, it is not the case that it's only three work packages usually it's between eight and nine but ultimately each work package is contributing to the final um, proposal which then is submitted by the coordinator so once the, um, the proposal has been set, it's time to submit it. So the, the process of the submission is totally done online. So you can start your submission by, by going on the topic from the funding and vendors portal. And for example, in this case, we have two types of actions under the, under the same topic. So obviously you need to decide for which part of action you are going to apply. So then you start by pressing on the tab and you will move forward to this section so for example here in this case um, i have a uh, i my playlist has, has an entity and so i will take the lead here as a coordinator so what i do i select my entity so also make make sure that you are reading carefully what are the messages that are being shown in the red text those are there to guide you so here at this stage once i have selected my my role as a coordinator, I can move to the next step. So here, um, obviously, yet again, we have um, important messages that need to be addressed. So 
So here, after being uh, assigned myself as coordinator, I need to start selecting departments. At this stage, um, it is important that um, anyone that we're going to collaborate with as a partner, you need to make sure that they have at least a declared status on the funding and tender portal. A declared status is when you have um, uh, when you, are, you sign in your entity. But at this stage, it is enough. Further down the line, it is very important that the entity is validated. It means that certain documents have been transmitted to the commission so that um, the entity is validated and could be and participate even in the grant agreement process. Yet again, now we can see that we can download the templates, we can then fill them up as a, as a coordinator. And when doing so, obviously we have other opportunities like, for example, uploading the, the proposal when it's ready. So um, it is, this can be done multiple times as long as the sub submission date is not surpassed. So the, the main takeaway here again is to start early. So if you are considering to, to participate as a coordinator or even as a partner, make sure that you have downloaded the templates early and you start working on the proposal at an early stage because things yet again may change and obviously to produce a good proposal, this actually takes time. So once you have ready, you are ready and you have submitted um, the proposal, make sure that you have also validated um, before pressing submission because the validation will will check that if you have some errors that needs to be addressed or not. So now we pass on to the grant agreement process. So the commission is, is, is legally bound to uh, evaluate proposals within five months. So once the um, submission date has surplus, um, the commission has those five months in which um, it needs to, to provide feedback back to the coordinator about this project if it was um, shortlisted or not. Yet again, here it is important that the entities that are part of a consortium, especially those that are part of a winning consortium, have their status validated because it could be the case that in the, for example, you pass to the grant agreement preparation stage and um, entities are not yet validated accordingly, they could in there or jeopardize first their position and also the whole consortium. So as a coordinator, um, it would be very beneficial to check also the status of these entities. So then after those five months of evaluation, you have another three months which are um, being fenced for the, for the grant agreement preparation. And once everyone signs, or the coordinator signs the, the grant agreement with the commission, the project can start. Usually, if for example, a um, project a grant agreement is, is signed in November, usually the project kicks off in, in January. But obviously this is less, um, it's not always the case, but it usually this 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 is usually repeated quite quite often. Apart from the grant agreement uh, with the commission, it is very advisable to have a consortium agreement within the department of the consortium. And for example, over the years, um, the, the model grant agreement, which is formed about um, on desktop, was a collaboration between different well-known entities, which are for years to be validated for twenty, and they have decided to create this model grant agreement so that they can like um, coordinate better um, the activities within the consortium. In this case, um, the desktop model grant agreement is covering um, the revision of Asian actions and the Asian actions. This is downloadable, so um, you can put the website there and download it at your, at your pleasure. And, and this is guiding you in, for example, giving a clear, detailed um, explanation on, for example, what are the roles of the, of the consortium members, how the governance is, is, is done between the parties, for example, how to settle any disputes, and any financial provision or how to deal with liability, especially how to deal with new sensitive data, confidentiality, dissemination, and most importantly, IP. So this, this agreement is very 
important, it's better that you have it defined as well. And also, this is something that is praised also by the Commission. So it is very important that this is in place in any court case. And just to give you a little bit of an overview, this is something that usually is done in par with the grant agreement. But obviously, I suggest that the consortium agreement is um, prepared and signed even, let's say, months before that the grant agreement uh, finishes. So obviously, uh, once that you know that your project has been shortlisted and this is going to get funded. So now we move to the actual. Um, projects running, um, in the sense when it comes to dealing with a project, uh, we need to use these skills which are much more related to project management because at the end of the day, we are managing a project. So, as a coordinator, obviously, you need to be aware of certain tools which are very common in project management. Usually, these tools are also put into the proposal, for example, a gun chart, a pair chart, uh, where breakdown structure. So any of these tools are very beneficial so that the running of the project is, is done without any hindrances. Obviously, there are certain deliverables that need to be respected with the grant agreement. And obviously, such tools are need to be used as much as possible. So just to give you an idea, this is just a representation of, of a gun chart. You could see here that we have different deliverables pertaining each work package. Then we have even milestones. And we have also a work and breakdown structure. So a work, a work breakdown structure is another tool which is um, subdividing a task. So it's a good way to have a representation of what completes a bigger task. So this is another tool that can be used as much as possible. Obviously, as a coordinator, you need to have these in place and make sure that any part of the consortium, the other partners are aware of this and they are following their part. We have also another um, representation here of a pair chart. So basically, um, a pair chart is uh, another form of chart which is actually showing the links between um, the work package. For example, as you can see, for example, to proceed to work package three, you need, you need to first do work package one. In the case of work package four, there, there is no actual relationship with other work packages. So this is another way how to conceptualize and also visualize in your brains how the project is linked and who is involved in certain areas and who needs to do some certain deliverables so that the project is moving forward. So these are tools that obviously um, make use of them and also it's nice to see them even at the proposal stage because obviously these are part of the actual implementation. So we can move to the last bit, which is about uh, final tips now. So yet again, um, start early. So once you have selected the type of code that you are interested in, make sure that you are working on the, not the proposal, on how to get the connections, how to get involved with partners. Yet again, it was mentioned by Tamar, so there, are times, there are events, there are initiatives, there are networks. So um, there are a lot of people who have the same interest. We will be surprised to find that there are a lot of people that are looking at the same code. You can see it even through the funding and leaders portal. Under each topic, there are a number of entities which are going to apply or are going to provide a service in this topic or area. So the people are there. You just need to find the right people for your case. Make sure to also um, look at successful consorts as well. So. Um, if it's in your experience as a first experience as a, as a partner, let's say you want to be part of a, a consortium, make sure that you find the consortium that has a, a good track record when it comes to planning projects because that will be obviously favorable in your case. Also, read the text, make, make sure that you are understanding um, the initiatives uh, within the policy behind it, um, the terms. That's why we started with a glossary so that you get. And really well well understand what it's all about. Make sure that there is market uptake. So and also make sure that we have done or concluded some sort of external um, synthesis of the market. Because obviously, if you are going to propose something that is 
is already available in that universal consider that you need to provide something that is not already there so make sure that you know exactly what's 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 going around in your research area and ultimately make sure that there is there is interest even from the stakeholders that might support the idea for example let's say you're going to like develop a tool that would be useful for for the airport make sure that the airport is already on board at the end that will obviously give you a lot of marks in your presentation so now we can proceed to another interactive part so today we are very pleased to have with us uh, two, two people that were very involved um, in, in the horizon 2020 project we have prof claire demarco who is an associate professor from the department of mechanical engineering and she was um, involved in a mechanic project and she will give us share a little bit um, her experiences with us and also we have mr George Manta, who is a uh, business development director at Aquabaratech, who will be giving us a short presentation on, on his role within Aquabiotech and also their experiences in project. So, hello, um, Prof. Claire DeMarco. Can you hear me, please? Are you there? Until um, Prof. Claire DeMarco joins, uh, um, maybe George Montes can take the floor. All right. Sorry, because I'm not seeing the screen. That's why. Okay. Hi, George. Hello. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, George. Yes. I'll just say hi as well, and then I will uh, uh, switch off the camera, and I will start my presentation. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining, and thank you for the invitation and uh, the presentations, Tamara and Mark. Uh, I don't know if I can share my presentation and... Uh, yes, of course you can share, you, all you need to do is to share your screen. Okay, and uh, okay. please Mark, let me know if... Yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, George. You can, you can see the presentation? Yes, you can see it. Okay, that's great. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, so I wouldn't consider myself excellent, but I will share uh, our experience from an SME, SME for uh, from a, uh, enterprise here in Malta about our involvement in Horizon and uh, the engagement on the day to day, I would say, uh, and the engagement in H 2020 consortium building partners and uh, all these things. Uh, so, but first, uh, let me give you a little bit of a background about uh, uh, who we are. We are a Maltese-based company. Uh, we are a knowledge-based company. Uh, we've been established in 1998, and we work around the, the uh, uh, marine, environmental, aquaculture, and fishery sector. Today, we are 85 people coming from 25 countries, very international team, but also that reflects also our uh, geographical outreach. We have a lot of international business. I would say we are a, a very innovative company and uh, we've been recognized for that in different uh, platforms and, and, uh, and, and uh, cases. Uh, and uh, I would say uh, we are an active partner in Horizon 2020 and uh, European Collaborative Research Frameworks. Uh, over, uh, in addition to what our commercial activity, we have also uh, and as part of our, our, our uh, establishment, we have also our own research infrastructure here in Malta. We have about 1,500 square meters of uh, research infrastructures uh, related to marine environment, uh, uh, ecology, ecotoxicology, fisheries, and aquaculture research. So it's, I would say it's one of the uh, largest private research facilities uh, of its kind in Europe. Uh, and that was built uh, over the years. And uh, that was also, uh, 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 Horizon 2020 played also a role into uh, FP6, FP7, and uh, uh, they played a role as well into uh, 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 gradually developing that facility and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, also running more and more research activities there. But at the moment, we are also doing a lot of commercial, like primarily is focused on uh, commercial research. I would say the research center, and part of it is the Horizon 2020 research. Uh, in terms of Horizon 2020 research, uh, as a company, we have, a, I would say, a good track record uh, in, uh, in, uh, in being involved in projects. 
Uh, currently, we, as you see, a list of projects that uh, I have in this slide. Uh, we have uh, uh, five ongoing projects uh, with uh, and uh, one in grant agreement preparation. And uh, I want to show the project because uh, I think it is important. I will talk to uh, about that later. There are projects that are taking place in Malta, but also there are projects that are, have case studies elsewhere. And uh, there is a good diversity of projects. In, uh, I would say uh, we are in one project coordinators, the efficiency project uh, we, we coordinate, and the rest of the projects are project partners. And the, most of the in most of the projects we are uh, uh, work package leaders, uh, task. Uh, of course, in most of them are task leaders, but also we tend to be work package leaders as well. And, now, uh, some important points. I think uh, uh, I think uh, Tamara and Mark covered very well uh, uh, the, the, the 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 presentation of what is Horizon 2020, the administrative framework. Uh, some important points from a participant perspective, and uh, what you should consider. I mean, for ex so that might what I'm going to present might not be very relevant for uh, uh, those that are very experienced because they know how to how the the uh, the horizon system works but uh, when you are new i think it's good to uh, start with those considerations uh, so for for us uh, i think it's very important that you start your involvement in horizon as a partner uh, implement your first project from a to z see how it works the reporting the consideration the uh, deliverables uh, so that is super important before you take the role of a coordinator unless you have a, a very experienced uh, uh, people in your team that come from other institutions and then you can take on that role and they can lead that uh, area uh, but if you are new and your team is new in the horizon start from looking yourself position as a partner in any project uh, and uh, of course you will come with an idea within a framework and uh, uh, since you are uh, a partner try to fit your idea within a bigger project don't try to uh, fit the project uh, in the idea sometimes the uh, the uh, the horizon challenges are i would say uh, greater and uh, we can only cover one part uh, given the fact that there are different geographical areas different uh, uh, situations in different environments so look at how you fit your idea into the project. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, how do you get there, I think the, the most important thing is look for a coordinator uh, at first. Don't look necessarily for partners because you will be looking, uh, you, you demonstrated the table before what is the role of each one and, and uh, the coordinator is who decides who is in or out in the project. So effectively, uh, you should be looking to liaise with the coordinator because he is a decision maker. It's rarely that partners can bring other partners on board. They can propose, yes, but uh, it's, uh, it's the coordinator who has the final say. So effectively, it's very important, I think, from your, uh, whether you are in big brokerage events or, or uh, your market intelligence, uh, when carrying out market intelligence, uh, to see to identify possible coordinators. And these are usually uh, uh, known organizations or organizations with experience. Uh, the next point is, uh, uh, when do I start to, to, to engage with uh, uh, possible coordinators or, or, or partners? Uh, and then this is, the, the sooner you start, the better it is. And that process, I would say sometimes it starts even before the calls are issued, when we have a resubmission of other pro of, of past uh, failed proposals, or when you are uh, when the calls are issued, the, the draft uh, calls are issued, and then you should, uh, uh, I would say, if you are new, start looking at uh, uh, coordinations and consortia at the very beginning. Uh, this is where when uh, the core team is formed at the very beginning and then uh, the 
the rest of the partners are filling the missing parts, I would say. So if you want to have a significant role in the project, you have to be in the core team. Now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how does it work, and uh, I say here, H2020 has continuity. Uh, it means that uh, uh, it progresses as we go along, as well as the challenges they seek to address. Uh, and effectively, projects build on other projects. There is continuity of work, and uh, effectively, uh, you should, to, to add many times even in the call, uh, the call describes other projects that uh, could be used or other lessons learned or other deliverables that will be useful to build on uh, the next challenge. So effectively, it's also good to start from what has happened before in this area, in this challenge area, whether this is marine, whether it's space, whether it's uh, 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 health, related, so seek who is working in this area, who are the leading, uh, the leading uh, uh, institutes in this area through Horizon, because you might have leading institutes that do not work in Horizon, they work mostly in national programs, but, uh, but uh, see who is involved in Horizon related projects, partners, key partners, uh, coordinators, and start from them. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, projects that are not uh, uh, that haven't been submitted tend to resubmit and uh, try uh, their luck for a second or a third uh, time. So uh, effectively, it's not always that when a new call is issued, everything start, start from scratch. So keep that in mind because uh, that could be a quite a number of projects that are resubmitted and they are in a in a very uh, high readiness level to respond to the call. Uh, and effectively, they have also an advantage. And by, go, by also trying to get into these consortiums, it's also important to, uh, that, uh, that uh, you likely to have uh, less preparatory work and your role can be very well defined. So, and uh, I mentioned the other point, ongoing projects. So see what our ongoing projects are uh, in the, area of, of uh, or, or in the challenge that you're looking to address the next call, what is already happening. And, uh, and, uh, and then some, uh, uh, what is, uh, I think Tamara also covered that, uh, but uh, when uh, introducing yourself, uh, uh, whether this is a web, uh, whether this is a, a pitch, whether it's a brokerage event, a, a matchmaking event, or whether this is a partner profile, as, as Tamara mentioned, uh, you have to uh, be specific. Uh, you have to be specific and you have to be relevant to the call. Uh, I, I've been many times in meetings where uh, I have uh, uh, academic that present the whole university, what is doing in the different departments, but uh, the coordinator is not interested about that. He's interested in what you can do, what's your expertise, and he will remember you for your for, his expert, for your expertise, so cover your expertise well, but also cover what you can do in relation to the call. So you will be picked based on your expertise and your and relation with what you can offer into the call, and you will be remembered, I would say, for your expertise. But what is, uh, what do you offer within the call? So read the call carefully and see what are the points you can address, what points you can address with your expertise, and focus on that. On that whether this is a small role or a bigger role. You start with a small role, you secure your participation, and then as you, you get access to the information and see you, where you can contribute. This is how you start. Uh, and uh, if you are more general, specify the calls and uh, the areas of interventions based on your expertise. And uh, I, would, I, have say, I would say that uh, it's a trend that a lot of projects are looking for case studies. So uh, effectively try to sell uh, uh, the Malta case study in your area, why it's relevant, why it has a socioeconomic impact, why it has a, it's relevant to the, its environment, uh, and uh, how, uh, the, if there is an application there. So that would be a good, uh, I would say, case study. We are a Mediterranean, uh, in Mediterranean, we can, I would say, we are a good case study for Mediterranean and promote Malta as a test bed for uh, research and innovation. Uh, and uh, 
but don't limit yourself into that. So don't always think that, okay, because I am working on Mediterranean, I, I will only uh, focus. Uh, uh, sorry, I can't hear my, my, can't hear my, my, my voice. I don't know, my there is a background. Uh, and uh, so, so don't only think that uh, because you are in Mediterranean, you only have to cover that part. You might have a solution that has uh, application elsewhere. So that would be also relevant. And uh, then in terms of once you secure your, your, your uh, involvement in a consortium, I would say if you want to increase your, uh, uh, I would say, offering into the project and your share in the project, also that are beyond the scope of your research, uh, I would say try to include what is called responsible research and innovation uh, 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 actions within the project, like public engagement, uh, and other other uh, areas of intervention. Uh, and again, promote. I think it's always good to promote uh, uh, meetings uh, once you secure the, the uh, promote having meetings in Malta, promote having uh, events in Malta as part of the the project, and give the chance to the partners, to the greater uh, consortium and other stakeholders to uh, to to visit Malta and also uh, get to know your research area. And uh, dissemination, dissemination is very important aspect uh, from our end, and uh, it's always good to uh, demonstrate your work because it is that dissemination activity that will carry on after the project. And uh, when they are looking for future project partners, they, then the dissemination activity will be there to remind everyone that you were working in this area. Uh, and I think uh, there are a lot of different uh, uh, ways to reach out. Uh, Cordis, uh, but also European networks. I mean, you, you've presented them, uh, but I think uh, in, if you are new, reach out to MCFT and the Enterprise Europe Network. They both have platforms and, uh, and uh, uh, networks that can link you up with uh, uh, other, other uh, partners. And that is a good way to start. There are several events throughout the year, not during COVID, Time, I would say, uh, but they are still web matchmaking events that you can, uh, I would say, uh, attend and uh, make the most out of it. And uh, so, use existing tools and platform for your partner search is uh, is very important. And uh, I think for for from our end, I think of course the most important way to uh, uh, is to meet in person, and that is on uh, Horizon. Uh, 2020 matchmaking events, uh, and uh, I would I think it would be great to see more and more participation of of uh, uh, um, uh, of uh, Maltese uh, organizations and participants in those matchmaking events. I know MCST has also a, 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 a IPAS uh, Internationalization Partnership Award Scheme that can support those actions. So that would be great to see how this. Uh, can uh, 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 linked, but also see how existing research can be linked and how you can disseminate results and use that as a, as a, how you can demonstrate the project results of existing projects and how you can build on the next one. So try to uh, make the most out of it, I would say. In terms of matchmaking events, uh, just to give you, uh, which I think that they are the most important thing, and I think you, it's good to be prepared and make the most out of the matchmaking event as well. Uh, you think you have to see the matchmaking events as a very important step of building those uh, relationships and, and your network and uh, securing yourself, uh, your position in the consortium. Matchmaking events are uh, usually 20 minutes, uh, 20 minute uh, event. Uh, uh, sessions uh, with each participant and uh, so you need to be well prepared and in terms of uh, I would say there are three stages into uh, making the most of how to make the most out of each one matchmaking event uh, you have to be well prepared study your the other participant don't go there unprepared many people go unprepared I have seen it many times uh, study their area and choose to have uh, matchmaking events with those that are, you think, from an institutional point of view, could be also coordinators. Many, time, many times, if you see in the online platforms, uh, organizations do not say that they are uh, coordinators, and that is because they know that they will get overwhelmed with requests. Uh, but uh, 
uh, you need to, uh, if you have done that uh, uh, background research on existing projects, and all this, uh, you can identify who could be, uh, which organizations could potentially coordinate uh, projects in the, in the area of interest. So study well the participants, uh, see what they offer uh, and uh, look at the coordinators. When you are at the much while you are at the uh, session, try to uh, keep it focused. You only have 750 words to present yourself and the uh, same uh, as your, the counterpart. Uh, focus on your value proposition within the, the call of interest uh, and uh, listen as well the participant. Uh, don't be general, be very specific. And uh, try to, uh, after 10, if you have 10 meetings or five or 10 meetings or, or, or uh, 15, after the traveling as well, you will forget a lot of things. So take notes and uh, leave uh, the meeting with a clear idea of what is next, if there is a follow up uh, and what that follow up should be. And, uh, and then after the matchmaking event, make sure you follow up. Don't leave it for a uh, was similar to myself. I forget because there's a lot of things that I'm working on. Same everyone, I guess, working on this. And don't forget that, especially in this matchmaking event, people meet more than 20, 30 uh, people in a day. So the, the, the volume of information is huge to, uh, to keep in, uh, uh, in, in your brain. So make sure you keep the, your notes, make sure you follow up, follow up, and again, be specific on, on, on uh, what you are offering and uh, try to connect with that network. Uh, sometimes it doesn't matter if you don't get your, uh, your, uh, the, the, uh, in, the, in the consortium, as long as you build that relationship, sometimes it's too late, sometimes the consortium is already uh, 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 closed, but once you've established that relationship, once you communicate, once you then this is the way you, you shouldn't see only the short term wins, but you should see yourself in the long term. How do you position yourself in horizon? And uh, that's from my end. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. It was a very, very comprehensive way on how to get, get involved in Horizon 2020. Thank you very much and good luck for the for the other projects coming. Thank you very much. Um, hi, um, Prof. Prof. De Marco, how are you? Thank you for joining us again. I need, I need to. I think yeah, um, we can hear you. Hi. I, I, hi. I don't know if you can can mute because uh, I can find the mute button now and uh, should be below below the screen. Okay. Uh, I think, um, yeah. Lily, can you? Okay. Hi, hi, Prof. De Marco. Hi. I mean, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you can. You can. You can. You can. But now you have muted yourself again. <laughs> Lily, can you unmute her, please? Okay. Hi, Claire. Hi, okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. We can All hear right, you. sorry about that. Okay. I'm wondering also if you can see me as well. Okay, yes, good, good good morning. Thank you for inviting me to perhaps uh, give my experiences with regards to my H2020 involvement and my connections with MCST. Um, I'm not sure how much time I have now because it's already past 11 o'clock. Can you just advise me just to know how what the corners to cut, please? Yeah, you can, you can have. Ten, uh, five minutes, uh, no worries. Oh, okay, all right. Obviously, um, there's a lot of things that I can say, but I will keep it brief. Um, the project that I am coordinating, the University of Malta is the coordinator of uh, H2020. Let me see if I can share my content page as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, th the third button from the Yes, left. yes. Um, perhaps, okay, I'll go for my screen too, and perhaps you might see a bit of it over there. Okay. okay. You, you see, you're seeing this page. Okay, so, so basically, um, the project is an H2020. It is, in fact, it is a widespread, it's a CSA twinning project. So what that means, it's a twinning, it is a lot of networking. 
Um, it is only which we're only four members, thank God. Um, it's University of Malta, which is a project coordinator, and I am obviously the project leader. There's the University of Strathclyde, the University of Genoa, and the local company, Naval Architectural Services. In a nutshell, um, this project is a maritime related project. Um, what I would like to focus on is the fact of, as I was asked, how did we come about with the consortium? Uh, I have been involved in academia for, for, for many years, and obviously you do get to know uh, quite a number of people. My experience is that if you have worked with people before, you know them. You know who are the good ones, who are the bad ones, who are efficient, who promise a lot of things and deliver nothing. And who are the organized people. Now, um, our history with these um, different organizations have spanned, I suppose, over 15 years at least, although obviously there are young members um, within the team. I, I, I suppose I am the oldest member within the team. Uh, it, is, it is very important that you, first of all, you know the people. You have, I, I firmly believe that you have worked with them, at least if you require more than a few members like we have here, perhaps you might, depending upon what project you are applying for, you can even have up to 15 members. You might also ask um, one of the partners who they have worked with within a particular field and they get on well together that um, it is, you know, that you can, you can work together and they will introduce them, obviously, and then you make sure that whoever they introduce um, fits perfectly in what your, your scope is all about. So that is how I normally go about for any partner search. I base it more on past experience, which is one of the main points that I wanted to bring with over here. Uh, another thing is obviously uh, there are a lot of H2020 calls and we chose the, the widespread because it is basically a lot about um, information and knowledge gain. It is a lot of, of learning and we want to use this project as a stepping stone because in the Malta University we want to build an experimental tow tank and obviously we have looked at the University of Strathclyde and the University of Genoa as um, you know, institutions that are already knowledgeable and expert on using them and then local uh, industry partner to be able to use it effectively within the maritime industry within Malta. Now, to, in a twinning um, call, the project coordinator has to be from a widespread country and Malta is one of the widespread company, uh, widespread uh, country. Now, for the duration of actually the propo proposal presentation. Obviously, it is best that um, you spend as much time as you can on the proposal because uh, sometimes, as you say, the, the devil is in the detail or the, the whatever you want to say. I mean, the, the detail that really counts on how you present it and spending time and writing the proposal well is, is very, very important. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly touch on that. Um, these calls are very, very competitive. In fact, for, for this call, I have a bit of stats. There were 456 proposals submitted, and we were one of the 37 uh, projects that were funded. Uh, perhaps a bit of information scoring is, is very, very um, it's hard, let's put it this way, and getting each and every point um, is, is very important. In fact, over here, all pro H2020 proposals always have the three sections of excellent impact and quality and efficiency of implementation, all scored out of five. Uh, our project got 14 out of 15, so at least the document that we created was um, well spot on by, by, by the looks of it. 
Um, obviously, I can and keep on going, but I think I, uh, my five minutes are already up. But <clears throat> just just as a quick um, just as, as a quick um, recap, or perhaps just a little bit more, uh, when you put your projects together, it is very important. I found that when you look at obviously the work project management and subdivide it into various um, work packages, you always link um, objectives and tasks together. When you have um, information in your proposal listed in, in tables and charts, I always say uh, a table and a chart um, can represent a thousand words. Uh, the proposals are very word and page limited, and you have to really squash everything into into the proposal. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything further I can quickly share with you. Obviously, when you go to the work packages, you have to go to subdivide your work packages. Now, this is a twinning project, and obviously my tasks are specific to the call. Obviously, your work packages and tasks must be specific for your call. Yes, obviously, you also have a Gantt chart listing all the work packages and tasks. And a Gantt chart, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a bit small over there. But, uh, but quickly, to hurry up, obviously, it is always good to look at the management structure. They always require certain basic elements that obviously you have the project coordinator, you have different groups to do various things. Obviously, you must always have the steering committee. You always must have dissemination, communication, and exploitation, and, and, and quality. The first, these three are a must. They are the basic, the bare minimum must. And then, obviously, as already explained, for all your work packages, you must have a clear defined work package leader and perhaps why. And also, you then subdivide your work packages into tasks. Um, there's a lot further that I can say, but I think I will, I, I will stop there. Uh, obviously, if there are any questions that you'd like to ask or even send me an email i'm more too i'm happy to to answer any questions but i think i'll i'll leave it in your hands now okay so okay. i have to see how i'm going to unshare the screen <laughs> thank you very much um, okay unless you can unshare me um i, I think now tamara will take over the wait i can share and tamara will okay. take the last right Th thank you very much thank you very much for your insightful intervention Hello, can you hear me? We're not seeing the screen yet, Tamara. But you want to How can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Tamara. But you're not okay, um, I'm sharing the screen. Actually, it's marking that I'm sharing. It's not showing yet. If you want, I can share it. Yeah, you can share it. Let me do that. Hello? Yeah. Uh, okay. Tamara? Okay. Um, it's still loading the content. It's still loading. Oh, it's not. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Can you see me? Right, great. Tamara. I cannot see the content, though. Yeah. Lily, can you see my content, please? Mine's not working then. If, 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 if anyone. Okay. Can. All right, now it's coming. Okay. So um, uh, now we'll go over our support services very briefly. So our uh, our main goal is that we increase uh, um, multis organizations um, their participation in Horizon 2020. And we do so by first spreading awareness. We do so that through our mail shots and our website. So if you would like to um, register to receive these, through our Horizon 2020 Facebook page, it is very active. 
Um, we do host information sessions and webinars. We do training sessions as well, and we uh, promote brokerage events as well. Um, uh, we do these information days as well, and uh, after everything is settled down with the current COVID pandemic, we will actually restart these um, these physical sessions. We uh, do advise, we provide one-to-one -one consultations, so do not hesitate to contact us. We disseminate your partner searches, and we also offer proposal pre-screening. We will not really go into the technical details, but we will um, check out your administrative part of the proposal. So we will make sure that if you have to address something in the excellence part, you do not put that in the implementation and things like that, which are very important. We do provide customized support and it's based on client needs, financial issues, legal issues, grant agreement, project management group, and we do presentations upon requests as well. Um, we as national contact points, we have different roles. We have different areas. So Mark, if you can, yeah, thank you. So Andrea Fabri is our NCP coordinator and she takes care of spreading excellence and widening participation and legal and financial issues. We have Lily Fazileva, which takes care of Marie Correction, the ERC and FET. George Pujaya, which takes care of energy, transport, legal and financial issues, and URSM. Mark Malak, which provided the previous presentation. He focuses on ICT and MBT and secure societies. Stephen Frigero, which focuses on innovation in SMEs, access to risk finance, and space. And if you would also like to learn more on EEN, um, you can actually contact Steve as well. And uh, myself, Tamara, I have Climate Action, Europe in a Changing World, and SWAF. And our latest NCP, Ian Cautiborta, which focuses on health, food, marine and bioeconomy, and research infrastructure. We as well have a dual role of program committee members. And if you as well would like to share um, what you would like to see in the next framework program, you can contact us. and. We can actually um, do a virtual meeting or uh, we can do a one-to-one -one meeting as well um, and you can discuss our, your ideas with us. We will move on to the Q&A session. So if there are any questions in the chat box, we can address them now. So um, uh, we maybe we can leave a minute or two waiting for the questions. You can take the floor as well if you would like. So that's it for now. Can, can anyone see any questions? Maybe Mark, can you see any questions? No, It seems that there are no questions. Um, okay, there it is. Can you give us an example of how a project can shift from one call to another, like from research and innovation action to CSA? Okay, let me check. Can you give us an example? Um, obviously, the type of actions, um, I think, um, the type of actions require mm -hmm. um, different. Um, set plans in a sense in a case of a CSA usually the the, the scope of the form and the topic would be like to create networking activities to disseminate information in the terms of research innovation action it's more um, considering low TRL research so um, it, it's very hard to shift um, an, a, a research innovation action to a CSA um, if you have a uh, that's why it's very difficult also to, to, to produce an example. What can happen maybe in this under the same topic, you have different um, actions, as even was shown in the, the previous, previous slide that I said so on, but to shift totally a project from an RIA action to a CSA is quite um, difficult because, first of all, the budget is really an RIA 
um, has a larger budget. Because in the case of the CSA, it's really a monopoly beneficiary activity. Um, so at, in this case, I cannot give you a clear example of, of this sort. What can happen in my, um, that you can have a CSA, which is uh, a continuation of an RIA, but it's not an actual change. Maybe I, I hope this was clear. Okay, we have another question. Uh, hello, it's Lily here. Uh, just a second, please. I think this is something that so uh, I see the other question from Frankie is um, Are there Horizon projects that fund PhD studies? Uh, yes. Uh, this is funded, uh, Marie Curie Actions do fund PhD, PhD studies. In particular, there is the um, ITN type of action. ITN is Innovative Training Networks. The idea is that there will be a consortium and um, each one of the beneficiaries then will be able to actually recruit a PhD student uh, who will be enrolled in a PhD program and this student actually will be working on an individual uh, project that will contribute towards uh, toward the, the, the common project. And uh, he will be actually, um, he, will, he will be employed with, with the institution. He will have like, like a working contract and uh, he will be receiving, he or she will be receiving um, a, a living allowance. Uh, which is basically the salary plus mobility allowance um, and if the, also the other person, the researcher, has a family, also family allowance. So in this way, it is 100% uh, paid PhD um, studies. I hope that that answered your question. So, um, uh, if there are any more questions, we can address them now. I don't believe there are any more questions. So, we can close today's session. We would like to thank again our speakers for joining us. Um, they were very useful tips. And uh, we can notice the different different methods. There, there is no one one way which you can approach uh, um, partners. Some use their previous um, uh, the actual previous networks. Some actually go to brokerage events and they meet other people. So there is uh, no one stop to shop for uh, for finding your perfect consortium. And we hope this helped you, and uh, we hope that uh, we will find uh, the best partners, and we can actually help you in finding that as well. And we're here for your, we're here to offer you these type of services. So do not hesitate to, yep, do not hesitate to contact us. There are our emails there, and uh, we hope that we will see you for our last webinar this month. Thank you very much.